All right, hey, um, sorry about this. There has always been like a really, really, really good, you know, performer at this spot. But because of Corona, uh, he or she wasn't able to come. So this is like a filler uh, thing. Sorry for that. But uh, hey, uh, we have like a fantastic three uh, X plus CEOs here. So we have Mika, who is currently uh, or not an ex CEO, uh, he is still employed. Then we have Andreas, uh, who used to be a CEO, and Marianne, who used to be a CEO. So my first question is really that, please tell me which one of you is the best CEO? <laughs> <laughs> um, the best? I, if I have to name one, I, I would have to name me. I mean, the guy has gone through COVID and everything. We're now here together, like <laughs> insane. Yeah, I, I would really say the same. <laughs> Yeah. So, hey, um, Schloss has been about to go bankrupt like several times, right? I, I guess you have even cried. Uh, tell me about what has been the worst situation. And now, now I want you to be really open and no boilerplates, please. Just be really open of your feelings and the event. It can be small or big. And, uh, Marian, if you start. Yeah, I can start. Um, I was the CFO. 2013, uh, before doing other things and running the conference. And um, the year I joined, I was 21. I had never done finance and never been CFO. The event was supposed to be 800k. The event was 1.6 million euro budget. And um, we all thought that, yeah, like a lot of ticket sales and sold out, this is going so well. And then during the event and after the event, just like invoices started coming in, last minute stuff we had to do. Like we had tents in cable factory, had to buy gasoline with thousands of euros to warm the tents up and everything. And I was just, we had moments of zero cash on bank account and we had partners uh, abroad who just didn't pay their invoices. And I remember, um, days between Christmas and New Year's that we had a limit of, I could pay out 8,000 euros a day. So every day I paid 8,000 and that was max I could do. And next day I got again 8,000, that's what I paid. And um, ultimately we made, I think, 27,000 euros of profit. But uh, I was not sure if that would, would have happened. Not in control for sure. Cool, how about Andreas? You told me before this that there was a moment when you felt that you are just a smiling facade, but you are dead inside. <laughs> <laughs> I think all of us have gone through that at some point. Um, no, it's uh, that moment was uh, was something that actually happened after after one of the events. Um, there was there was a situation where everything had gone super well, but there were some people in the team who whose experience wasn't great, and then obviously that kind of that that colors everything that happens after the event when when you're supposed to be celebrating everything that's gone well and then it, it is actually something where you as a leader feel like it's obviously your fault you've yeah. done something wrong for something like this to happen yeah so then it's uh that's that's what happens i i think quite often but another time which is maybe is not quite as dramatic as marianne's uh ex experience or or example but one thing that was actually one of the most difficult and one of the most teaching experiences for me during the whole slash tenure was actually before I was CEO. I was, I was doing investor operations and uh, that was the first year when we wanted to get a lot of people over from, from San Francisco uh, to Helsinki. And there was no direct flight. And obviously you have all these billionaire investors who are used to having their private planes or at least a direct flight in first class and they wouldn't move their ass anywhere. So uh, somehow someone managed to make a deal with Finnair that we can take one of their brand new airplanes the big Airbus A350 ones that have 300 seats, that we can fly it over to San Francisco uh, to get yeah. the speakers over on a charter private flight. But obviously the thing was that we had to sell four legs of flight. So we had to fill the plane with people out of Helsinki to San Francisco for the Great duration slash. of the conference. Mm -hmm to be able to cover the finances of, of, uh, of doing that. So we just sent, we spent several weeks in San Francisco just from meeting to meeting to meeting, literally knocking on people's doors, selling the seats on the plane. Uh, and, and there was one particular call, which when I, I was there with another uh, friend of mine who, who, was, who was also in the team, who's now running his own company as well. You called with, with Nikki, who was working with you uh, back at the time, and uh, we were just in between some meetings that you asked, well, how many seats have you guys sold? 
Uh, we had only gotten a lot of American interest. Yeah, we'll talk, we'll talk to everyone about it and we're going to do it. But obviously the response was that there was zero. And I think the next day there were headlines in, the, in one of the main newspapers here that slush flight sold out, <laughs> which is, uh, <laughs> then we had a little bit of shoes to fill. How about you, Mika? You, you are real like a wartime CEO, I guess, with COVID, etc. So you started last, just like two months before the corona pandemic like started, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so I started as the CEO in January 2020 and uh, we canceled the event in March. Um, and I think that's definitely the, the, the most toughest, toughest uh, experience that I have gone through. Uh, obviously back then, if you think about it, in, back in 2020, at that time, March, April, many, many people thought that the pandemic will be over uh, after the summer or during the summer. Uh, but we kind of like felt that in the best case, we could do the event and it will be okay. In the worst case, the downside was that the slush will go bankrupt. And obviously when we realized that, uh, and when I actually realized what it me would mean, it would mean every, uh, uh, that I have to lay off many of lovely slush team members. That was definitely the toughest part. And, and I have to do it and, and go through it. And, and I think one of the biggest learnings from that experience was that there was many times that I wanted to kind of like hide myself under the mat, but I just realized that it's me eventually who will do the decisions and will push forward this organization. Kind of this Ben Horowitz, hard things about hard things. Are you actively running towards the pain? I think that's the core learning of the past two years of being a CEO uh, of Slush. And uh, that's also one of the reasons what, what makes me so incredibly happy and grateful for seeing all of you here today. So thank you for being here. Yeah. So um, this is maybe a little bit provocative question, but like um, if you think about like Schloss, this is like a great event and this is a really good like a leadership grinder in a way, right? You all are nodding, but when you left Schloss, so when you left and when you left and when you're leaving right now, do you feel like a pressure that you need to be successful? What if you fail? I mean, what if you found a company and it fails? Don't you feel like a pressure? You are like the star of the ecosystem, right? And then you found a company, you fail. What happens then? Do you feel the pressure? Yeah, um, it's a good question. I think the, the Walt team hasn't helped this, uh, uh, <laughs> the, the, the pressure thing. But I think um, it's, it's highly likely that the first thing will fail, or the second one as well. Um, but I think um, how I think about it is, is that I'm, I'm building something on the long term, and obviously it will in, involves uh, maybe a few failures. I don't know. Hopefully the first one is successful, but I don't know. Like it's, I'm not taking a stress about it. How, what was your experience like? Well, I, I can I can say that the first thought. I mean, I guess it's a very human reaction. Is that okay, what do, like, what do others think? Like, where can I go? But um, I've lear really learned during the last years that no one cares. I, I actually, like, in Finnish, what I would say, ketään ei ihan oikeasti kiinnosta, mitä sä teet. <laughs> like, no one really cares what you do. So do only the things that make you happy, where you learn, that kind of give you energy every day. Um, and that's kind of also what I ended up doing. I went through a lot of different alternatives, everything from going back to school to founding a company of my own, and joining Walt was just the best, felt the best choice. Yeah, yeah. hey, that sounds like a really good advice for everybody, is just do things that you enjoy. Everything else is a side product, right? So how about you, Andreas? Um, for me, it was clear uh, for, for a long time that I'll I'll have to do my own thing. And I had my own areas of interest that I really, really wanted to contribute to. And my way of contributing to them, I think, was probably starting my own organization because I didn't find anything that was directly doing what I wanted to be doing. So it was kind of a self-evident choice. But when it comes to the pressure, that's definitely there. But then again, having had the experience of running Slush, you, you, you kind of alluded to the fact that it's a, it's a leadership training program, not only for the CEO, but for, for many other people in the team as well. And uh, we've spoken about it with Marianne, Enrico and Mickey as well before, that never again, even if you're building a highly successful company that is growing very fast, takes on a lot of funding and, and there's a lot of pressure, never again will you feel the same amount of pressure as you do here when, when organizing this event. Because you have all the same elements as well when, when you're building a company, but the time pressure is so absolute 
It's not like you're launching a new product and you can postpone the launch event. Everything has to be ready by that one day. And there's, there's just no slack. So when did you realize that everything needs to be ready by one day? Was it like if the event is 1st of December, is it like during the summertime or first part of the When do you realize that the deadline's real? I mean, I guess these days it's set way in advance. Yeah, yeah like but when do you realize that it's coming? It starts feeling <laughs> after summer vacations and then it just becomes more and more intense. But what typically happens is that a group of team leads, like tens of people join the team August 15th, somewhere there. Yeah. Um, and then action starts happening every single day. Um, and then typically with six to four weeks before the event, we also like, really need to lock stuff so that the production you see around can be produced. Yeah. So that's like the first deadline that you really can't miss. Yeah. So, so how, how do you actually do this? I mean, I've been wondering it like, I mean, age is not the critical thing, right? But you are like 20 something and, and you are like uh, two to three thousand volunteers. So you're running like a two to three thousand person company. You had also uh, like two to three thousand. Now, because of Corona, it's scaled down. It's like one to two thousand. It's still a pretty sizable team, right? So, so how are you doing that? I mean, you guys have so limited life experience. Uh, <laughs> how, 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 how do you act as this like a smart Gandalf? <laughs> you know, you have a beard, so that's yeah. great, but that helps. Yeah. I know, but, but how do you act like this smart Gandalf who comes to the stage and kind of uh, tells to the troops and sets the spirit and culture and everything that people have been talking about here? I mean, you didn't get any training for that. So how is that possible? Well, not formal training, yeah. but my answer would be you just flex the muzzle. You do, you train. So you just flex the muscle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you kind of get yourself So do you mean that you train it or you flex it? <laughs> That's so amazing. I've always been wondering that I couldn't do this. <laughs> <laughs> you still can, Timo. It's not too late. <laughs> I couldn't. If I, somebody would say that, Timo, you will run slas, I would run away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think it, like with anything, it's... Of course, the, the way you succeed is by building a good team who, who does yeah. the actual work, obviously. Yeah, and, but and that's then, such a jargon. I mean, come it on. <laughs> but it's true. Yeah. It is true. But, but it's such a jargon, you know, build a good team. So yeah. How do you build a good team? You have never hired anybody before this. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good question. I mean, I don't know how we did. This thing still, still exists. Yeah, I know. I Something agree. must I have mean, worked. I was, I was the chairperson when you were the CEO. Yeah. <laughs> and you had a good team. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I there's know. like Emma, who is right now COO at Swappy, right? Yes. Great company. Mm. There are several other people who are doing great things, right? Building companies, etc. But how is that possible? Are you so charming or...? It doesn't start from us. I no, mean, no, 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 no. So where it, does it start? Is, it, does it mean because of the board is so good that everybody... <laughs> Definitely <laughs> not. Um, I, I think it starts from the fact that, at least to me, like yeah. why did I join back in the days? the sheer amount of responsibility you can take, even as a volunteer, and how much, like, the amount of action and energy you find is, yeah. it, it doesn't exist anywhere else. And when you see growth stories, like, you know, Araho, for example, who was talking in the volunteer's day, who's been yeah, here yeah, yeah. in the eco ecosystem and now runs a company of its own, you really kind of, you, you get it. You understand that these are stories where you can get a lot of inspiration and energy for. Yeah. Uh, from being part of it. So that, that's really a big part of it, understanding yeah, yeah, yeah. the culture and getting, being part of it and then realizing that I can actually impact. Like I told earlier about the story of me being 21. I had no idea of finance and I found myself funding, running finances for a conference of 1.6 million euros. Yeah. Where could I do that elsewhere? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, so uh, basically the three things that we look uh, when we hire people to the slush team is One is that, uh, do we see that the potential of these people is about to explode when we g give enough responsibility? The second thing is, is kind of this clari clarity of thought. And also thirdly, is this person actually a great person? Because there are, uh, we want to find people who are smart, but also good people. And when, when you have these kind of people that have these three different traits, and you say kind of like what we want to achieve, you don't have to say like, Uh, how to do it. They will figure it out. And then you just kind of like build 
kind of like the environment where these people can foster. I think that's that's how they how this event gets built. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, so, so why 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 have you been doing this? Uh, and and just for the audience, uh, you know, maybe this is unfair to say because these people are just like outstanding, right? I mean, when 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 you guys started to run this thing. It was so obvious that, of course, you know, Marianne, Andreas, and Mika are going to do. But, but in fact, like, when you started, you just took it over, right? You just started, you know, doing it. When you started, there was nobody else, basically, right? It doesn't make you, you know... Mm. When you started, it was also in a way that, hey, it's going to be this guy, right? So wh- why are you doing this? Are you pressured by it, you know? All these like old heroes like Miki Kuusi are coming to you and saying that Mika, you can't say no. <laughs> so so then it's very difficult to say no. You know, Ilka Panonen comes to you and says that you can't say no. <laughs> so and and and, and I, I remember you guys were all thinking that should I take this task? What were you thinking in that? Did you really feel that this crown jewel of Finland is now in your hands and, and you can't break it? You you have a duty to do it or 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 Was it just like you said that, hey, let's do it, right? For me, it was literally, I was sitting in the middle seat of a car, back middle seat of a car, driving yeah. back from Lapland. I get a call, can you do this? I say, yes, let's do it. Okay, good. So that's the, that's the story. <laughs> so how about you? Did, did you feel like uh, that this is something that you wanted to do, something that you were required to do? Is this relevant question? Because I remembered all these talks. Yeah, I think for me it was uh, it wasn't obvious. Um, obviously, uh, being the CEO of Slush is kind of like uh, there there is a high tendency that you 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 would go into that into that role for wrong reasons, for having a chance to speak on the stage or do the opening show or uh, having the privilege to speak uh, in front of all of you in general. But I really have to think about like what do I have for this organization and I'm, am I doing this for the right reasons? And when I realized that, uh, yes, I am. Uh, I want to learn to build a company in the future. This is a great sandbox to do it. And also I, I, I have been part of SLUS as volunteer since 2014. So I really breathe, live and breathe the mission, create the help founders to change the world. So that's, that's, that's how I eventually decided. I think it's it's not entirely untrue that there isn't pressure from from these people who have you have already gotten to know the people who have done it in the past. But then again, obviously, it ultimately has to be your decision. And there's certainly for, for me the reason it wasn't obvious for me either. Uh, my other option would have been to start my own company back then uh, and and not do this instead. But then combined with the fact that it's it's such a, it's a learning opportunity that you you will just not get anywhere else on on that scale at that. Like level of or the little with the little life experience that you have, um, and on the other hand, maybe you you think rightly or wrongly that you have some ideas where you think like okay, slash has this certain kind of a potential which I think it can fulfill, and if I take on the job, then at least I can only blame myself if it doesn't fulfill that potential that you see in it. So that's that's maybe one part of it, and then obviously it's just a huge privilege to be surrounded by by the kinds of people that you are surrounded by. Yeah. When, when doing this, yeah, that's reason enough. Itself. Yeah, hey, hey, totally different question, and and, and I know because we have been discussing this uh, with Mika, for example. So now, when you are leaving this, uh, you want to find an idea for a company, right? And that's very difficult. So how do you how do you decide what you do? Which industry? Which idea? So do you get to the cottage over one month? With friends and a lot of beer cans or something, or sweatsuits or choking, you know, <laughs> activities or whatever, and, and, and then you just ca- analyze the internet, and, and then you come with the idea. What, what's your methodology? What are you gonna do, Mika, in practice? That's a good question. How um, do you find the idea? I think you sold sold also one one of the ways you sold this posi- position to me was that it this is a good time to think for your next. Next company. And how, uh, how much have you had time to think about well, it? Well, the, pand- the, <laughs> the pandemic didn't help, um, <laughs> but um, I have I have some ideas. So I, th- I, I like after slush, it's 
it's time to sit down. Um, what I have maybe realized from 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 discussing with with many entrepreneurs is it's not not a thing that just comes to your head uh, at some point and you just have to do it. That there are companies that have done, have been built from that way as well, but I think it's an active process. Uh, you have to look for problems, look for things that could be done better. But but how do you look though? So do you walk the streets and you look around or do you read articles? I mean, what, what is the way how you look those? Do you discuss the s- smart people or? It's a, it's a good question. I think. I, what about Andreas? You have been kind of like in, in the midst of process. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh He would have made a really good politician. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were joking that, ahead that's, of time. That, that, that's why, by the way, the biggest risk with Schloss active members is that they become politicians. Hasn't happened that much. No, it hasn't. No. Because there's a pressure. Yeah, <laughs> not, you have to do not something to else. There. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's see if that changes. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I've, I've been in the middle of trying to navigate what the company should do that I'm doing. And we've yeah. gone through one fairly large transition already. And I think the way to navigate it is that's I mean, it, it, it's pretty clear that you shouldn't start a company just for the sake of starting a company. So uh, no company just for the sake of starting a company? No, I, I, I don't think that makes any sense. Why not? Because wouldn't it be just good to do something instead of thinking what to do? Sure, you can, you can do that. Um, I wouldn't do it. I would do something else and then in the meantime try to think yeah, yeah. Uh, if, if I have an idea that could actually like be me, best as a company. Like me, that done now. Well, very successfully. Yeah. <laughs> with, a lot of, with a lot of spare time. Mm. No. It's a difficult question. Yeah, Absolutely. it's a difficult question. Because I don't know how, if I would need to go out right now and say that, hey, I want to become an entrepreneur in six months. And we have invested in like 120 companies. And there's always a different story, how you run into the company idea, right? And it's always a different story. But the worst thing is that you try to invent it mm. forcefully mm. because you want to be an entrepreneur. It's it's very difficult to, you know, push through the you know the obstacles if you are not like 100% committed to you know doing what you decided to do, mm-hmm. right? Well, yeah. One thing that Slush is great for is finding like getting access to people that you otherwise would not get access to. Yeah. yeah which means that if you if you actually manage to develop relationships with those people and stay yeah. friends with some of those people. I, I, have, I have a story where I have, my co-founder is someone who I got to know through Slush yeah. over the years, and we stayed in touch, and now we are yeah. co-founders. Yeah. Hey, what, what is your message? And let's start with uh, Mika, maybe. Uh, I, I'm, I'm hearing a lot. I mean, I haven't heard, heard it lately, but uh, in 2019, uh, as a chairperson, I got a lot of like emails and calls that, hey, Slush is totally relevant. It's too big, it's too cluttered, it's too old, you need to renew yourself. It's kind of a becoming irrelevant. Uh, why is Flash not irrelevant? Yeah, I think... I want sharp answer. Sharp, okay. Uh, then I have to think. Um, well, it's, I think it's... The reason is what I also mentioned in the opening show. So, I think we all have learned uh, to do things remotely. We have re- learned to raise capital. We have learned to build organizations. Some of the organizations are fully remote. But like, Slush is not only what happens in the meeting area, like like finding deals, doing transactions, but it's more the community. So meeting other people, uh, sharing advice, getting inspiration, uh, and learning. So I think that's that's that makes Slush relevant now and in the future. So what's your opinion? It still seems like people want to meet each other uh, in some sort of a focused setting. Where, uh, and that seems to be happening here right now. Yeah. Um, and it, like, especially with one gap year, it seemed like the people who got the most out of Slush were really missing it. Uh, those people are definitely here. Uh, I've, I've seen those people. But it's, it's, it's a good question. I mean, everything has to... We were having these discussions already back yeah, in yeah, 2018 and 2019 as well. So, uh, yeah, no finished answer. For me, I mean, look at the crowd. I, I don't think anybody's forced you here, or do I know? I don't know. Um, you can raise your hand now. Evidence. Yeah, I yeah. trust the evidence and also myself. I was yesterday walking around for what was supposed to be a 10-minute round around the venue, but it took me two hours. Because I've just met so many people I haven't met in two years, and it was amazing. Like, the best part of my slush. Um, I, I really hope everyone else has had a similar experience as well. Yeah, yeah, there's this serendipity. I think yeah. it's great. 
Hey, um, now I offer you. So, so I've been, I've been on the Slash board probably for too long already, since 2012 or 13 or something. I've seen every living Slash CEO. Uh, <laughs> there are no unliving CEOs. <laughs> yeah, lucky. that's right. <laughs> yeah, just to be clear. Yeah, <laughs> but hey, hey, tell me, and now you can be brutally honest. How the board could have been supported you better? Hmm. What have what did we not deliver? As you can tell, we did and, not and get and this and question and ahead and of now, time. And now, if you have really hard things, tell before, and I plug my ear, <laughs> 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 so we can still be friends. <laughs> Yeah, we'll be friends anyways. Well, yeah, you are on the board right now. Yeah, so okay, yeah, I'm criticism. in a very biased position here. Um, but, but, but Andreas or Marian, if yeah, you want to start. If I start, yeah. I think the role of slush board has always been rather to be there for the team through the t- tough times, but it's never been really like this decision making where the team would come with like, you know, I need an approval for doing this or this or that. Uh, so it's been always a great, great form of feedback. If there's something that I would have done differently going back five years from now. I would have just utilized the board more, like mm-hmm. just nudged people. I don't think it's the board's responsibility to nudge me all the time, but I could have realized that I could have leveraged what the board had yeah. a lot that, more. That is actually before I give you some time to think. That's actually, as an investor, what, what I'm kind of seeing is that the best teams are actually really good at dragging you in. So, so you are in a way that, hey, I have like, Imagine 10 companies, so it's not 10% time for everybody, but it's like 40% for somebody who drags you in all the time. It's, it's like the best entrepreneurs are really good at utilizing advisors. When I was an entrepreneur, I was really lousy in that. But, uh, I was also really lousy in that <laughs> as a CEO of Slush. Yeah, so what about Andreas? I think the trouble is that you have, you have people who have been involved with Slush for such a long time that in, in a way, if you want to do it your own way, there's a certain barrier for asking for advice because you feel like the old world is going to be reflected in the advice. And there's no renewal in that sense. Now, this is maybe a little bit abstract. Or you don't trust old timers. Yeah, no, it's, it's not that. It's just that the old timers give old timer advice, <laughs> which is <laughs> fine. Yeah. You just described yeah. the Uber, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you want That's to be honest. My advice never gets implemented in any <laughs> of our companies. <laughs> now I, I better stop talking. Learn now. something. No, no. I like seriously speaking. Of course, I, I agree with Marianne. It's like there's there's a wealth of experience represented in the board. It's it's by design. Uh, I think it has always been so that they the board is not in the way. Of, or steps out of the way of the operative team of, of actually building that company, but it is there when it's needed, and it's definitely up to the, the CEO or, or the core team to utilize the board. And it is hard to remember that because your days are full of stuff, mm. and if, if the board doesn't want to intrude, then maybe you, you do waste some of the potential that is, that is in there. So, so what you are saying is that the board is lacking commitment, right? No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> You're still here. <laughs> yeah. yes. So Mika, you have the most refreshed memory. And... Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I would say I've been, I have taken quite active role uh, with the board. So like with the managing the schedule and creating way too long board decks. So sometimes it would have been great if you have just said like, just use one, one slide and tell what's, what, what's essential, not 40. Um, other than that, uh, what you have done well, but what maybe our team and um, especially me, like just calling, just calling one day, 10 minutes, how, how it's going, is everything all right? That, I think that's, that's, that's maybe one thing, um, but all in all, I think that's it. Maybe, maybe I will, I will, we have to do a dead briefing in, in, in Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's good. Hey, uh, why do you think that? This, all this slush and community is happening in Finland. Why not in Denmark? <laughs> so why is it happening here? Well, well, you know, Finns are not really like networking people. No. But really it still all, all starts with people. And I think as with everything, it started with people. There was a clear cause changing the culture towards entrepreneurship and everything and people who were willing to do that. And then timing. We were just a bit lucky mm. as well. With so, 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 so where did that cause emerge? So, so, so 
the beginnings of all this started in 2008, 2009, 2007. And, and like you said, it was because somebody wanted to do more companies, right? More startups, more yes. entrepreneurs. So how did the cause emerge? Very briefly, a uh, few people like Christo, Ovaska and Miki and others, a bunch of people saw what's happening in the Finnish economy, mainly corporates, new companies were not being established, saw what's happening around the world, for example, in Silicon Valley and understood that we just don't have this. And becoming an entrepreneur was not something anybody, uh, someone graduating from university would even consider doing. Yeah. Which has completely changed, yeah, if you yeah. ask me. So why 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 here? You have you you have traveled a lot. Yeah, Finns Finns prefer doing to talking. I think that's that's one one reason. I think part of part of that story is that so these students who were initially involved in setting up the Auto Entrepreneurship Society and kind of the whole foundation of yeah. this of the startup ecosystem, they they wanted to see what's being done in the different entrepreneurial capitals in the States. And they got back and got the advice from a professor, very luckily, who told them not to do another report, but actually to do something. Yeah. So they, they just did something. So normal, small people, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, they're, they're great entrepreneurs. So no Gandalfs. <laughs> the beard helps. <laughs> yeah. Mika, why is this here? You have been also traveling a lot. Yeah. Seen I... A lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of, you know, cities. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's super simple. So there was actually really national need for 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 more startups, more companies to be so, built. So why why would you care about national need? You are a young person. You could move anywhere. Yeah, I think it's a it's a it's a different pitch uh, to ask ask help for whether it's to get one speaker to slush or or, or whatever. When it's uh, if you compare, like, hey, we have this event uh, that I'm building uh, for profit. Uh, could you help me to get speaker than it is. So we're doing this event to create and help founders change the world and also build a better ecosystem to Helsinki. Uh, we're not for profit organization. Can you help? Uh, so I think it, these things that, that really, like it's a, in the essence, like what Slush and these other ecosystem organizations are, I, I think it, that's, that's the core reason why it's here, not in different cities. Yeah. All right, hey, let's have an applause for these mission-driven leaders. I, I, I have really been privileged to work with all of them, although I tried to give hard time, but they are all like, they are all like great, great human beings. Thanks for everybody. Thanks. Thanks.